1500 block of Hugh Street, two alarm fire uh, came in this evening. First arriving crew was engine one. Uh, they reported a three-story Victorian style structure with fire uh, and heavy smoke showing from the attic. So they made an interior attack. Uh, other crews following behind them made sure that they checked at the basement level, which is, actually doesn't look like a basement. It's more it's cut up into units where people actually can live. Uh, they ensured that the fire didn't originate there. And that's because of uh, this old Victorian style home has what we call balloon frame construction. Unless it's been renovated and fire blocks have been installed, the fire, if it starts low, can get into the wall, quickly extend all the way to the attic, and you can potentially lose the whole building very fast. So they need to ensure, uh, not only for their safety, but to know exactly how to attack the fire. Did the fire originate down below, or is it only on top? In this instance, the fire was all the way already, had looks to appears to have originated possibly interior on the third floor, quickly spread to the attic. The attic was fully involved when crews arrived. It, it appears no one currently living in this home. It appears that it's being renovated. There is no fire load inside the building, meaning there's no furniture or any th situations, uh, materials in there that tell us someone's currently living. It does appear like it's under construction or a remodel, uh, which is uh, can be a good thing, but it's also something for the investigator to look into as to why would a fire cause uh, when no one was, uh, or start when no one's living there. Uh, but it could be uh, because of the construction crews that were there. Sometimes mishaps occur, but that's up to that investigator to try to determine. When we go into the fire academy, they actually teach you about building construction. And one of the big things for anyone who's gonna work in the first battalion is we have these old style homes here. We have craftsman style homes, Victorians, and sometimes uh, they call them Queen Anne's, uh, some of them the, the way that they're built. And um, we learn about how they're constructed, the, um, as the years have gone on, a lot of these have been renovated and cut up now into separate units, uh, so they're not just made for one home. In fact, this building that the fire did occur, I believe I counted four to five mailboxes on the outside. Uh, that's one way to tell that it's cut up into units. Another way to tell is to look for multiple gas meters on the side of the home. Uh, that would tell you that there's multiple units in there and multiple people who are paying rent and, um, and living within the house. So we learn about the construction of these homes. Uh, we know the history that they're important to the people that live here. You know, we, we don't want these homes to be lost. Um, but the Sacramento Fire Department will always respond fast to any structure. It doesn't matter if it's an outbuilding or a shed. We want to get there fast, quickly put the fires out, and make sure that the public stays safe. Two alarms out here, so that's about 70 firefighters. You get about 35 uh, on your first alarm along with command staff. That second alarm, you're basically doubling that, um, getting a couple of ambulances out here in case citizens are her and or firefighters. So, um, and as you can see, you also get a PIO that will deal with information on a second alarm. Uh, we have investigators that are around, and then we also get our shift commander that responds to second alarm. Uh, just to like really round it out in case a larger scale incident's going on, we have the stop gaps for information and, and um, letting this thing grow and having everyone in place that we need. Uh, there's a safety officer out here uh, making sure that everyone who is working on the fire ground stays safe. Um, we have law enforcement that we called for very quick, code three, to shut down Q Street because as you can see, it is impacted with fire apparatus. And then our feeder line, our hydrant uh, closest to us, is across 16th Street, so they needed to throw that feeder across 16th. So unfortunately, 16th got closed down uh, right at our uh, it's impacting a lot of people are out i know it's uh, the holiday season we're coming upon christmas and people are out shopping so uh use alternative routes if you're coming down into this area because the fire uh, apparatus and firefighters are going to be out here for some time as we work to overhaul and salvage this building uh, rick is your rapid intervention crew and on a second alarm uh, when we have a lot of firefighters interior working they are going to set up a rick if we have the available resources and their whole responsibility is to bring tools forcible entry tools search rope bags and be able in the event um, that there is an injured firefighter or someone trapped or lost within the building they will be there ready with their radio channels their radios all their gear and they can make entry as a team and go to try to locate that down firefighter uh, that firefighter who would be down their responsibility is to activate their pass device go over their radio radio give what we call a lunar report that's their location their unit their name uh, their air how much air they have left um, and, and then uh, whatever needs they're doing to try to rescue themselves if they're attempting or if they're going to stay put. They make a lot of noise and, the, and then the RIC crew 
activates and goes in and tries to locate them. Um, a little thing that's interesting to that note though, most firefighter rescues when there needs to be one are conducted by the crews that are operating uh, in that area at that time. Um, if I would say 90 something percent of uh, fire rescues that occur for firefighters is done by firefighters who are already interior doing fire attack. They, they will be the ones who to affect the rescue and the RIC crew will end up usually secondarily taking over fire attack sometimes. So. Uh, we train on that a lot. Um, our firefighters are, are, are ready and willing at a moment's notice in case someone gets hurt. So uh, we just went through a big RIC, uh, uh, what we call an MCD, a multi-company uh, multi drill, where everyone rotated through uh, doing different levels of uh, RIC training and uh, um, doing command training as well in, in the event of the May Day. So the investigators have been in there for some time now. They're working to try to determine cause and origin. 15th is uh, Street between Q and, um, I'm sorry, Q Street between 15th and 16th is going to be shut down for quite a while. I would expect an hour to two at least. Uh, we will start releasing companies as fast as possible um, to try to keep the city staff because when we have a big fire like this, it, we do what we call a drawdown and out uh, units from all areas of the city, south and north, come down to fill uh, the gaps within the city so that we still have good coverage throughout. We want to get those companies back to their immediate fire stations so they will do what they can to quickly move um, and get some of these companies released and if they can they'll get these rigs repositioned to try to open some lanes as fast as possible but i, I believe an hour or two is, is a fair estimate for here they'll get that feeder line picked up as fast as possible um, so that we can open up 16th street in, in fact they might be working on it right now for all i know so they're doing what they call a tailboard the command staff's going through with the captains. Everyone kind of reports out and um, what they did, what they saw, um, and then any corrective action talk takes place at the tailboard, and then we move on from there.